Turn in an assignment. Thank you. Um, anyways, um, so I guess I'm going to start the class. Uh, so let me go back here and I'm going to share a screen with you. At least I hope I am. Hello. Good morning. Mr. Hubbard, how are you doing? Wonderful. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, Hubbard. Got you for attendance. I got the three of you for attendance. Um, I'm going back to sharing the screen, hit share. Oh. So, is everybody with me here? Do you see a screen? Yes, sir. All right. So, let me fix this view so I can really kind of see people. Now we see. Not allowing me to do that. All right. Anyways, here we go. Uh, this is module five. This is this week. Really, we're we're gonna talk about the composition project, which I should have started last week, but I didn't have anybody really come to class last week. Um, so we're kind of a week behind on this, but we have room to catch up. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the composition project today. Uh, mostly probably the whole class and uh, um, and we're gonna go back to chapter four uh, on Thursday and uh, look at some other pieces of music um, so here we go the composition project um, and it says composition PDF you can you can download the PDF by clicking right there or you can just view it by clicking on to the right of that. And uh, so I got a three page thing up here. Um, let me just uh, tell you, it's, uh, and it, I, I'm paraphrasing what's up at the top here. You'll be writing a theme and variation composition that's con and it's recommended that you do it for piano because if you do it for instruments, um, creates a, a large set of subsidiary or other problems. So it's, it's just simplest to do it for piano. I also want to state that, that we're not trying to do rocket science here. We're trying to emulate the things that we've been talking about in class. We're really concentrating on a melody, all right? Uh, and, it, and we're not talking about a spectacular melody. We're talking about something simple at least to begin with. Um, since it's a theme and variation, uh, by the time you get to the variations of it, you will, we will be in the variation chapter discussing what variations are. Uh, but the, the, pro the project's in four stages, all right? Stage one, stage two, is really getting your theme down. And your theme is really four, uh, it, it's a 16 measure theme. Um, total, where you have four measures and you have a cadence, and that's going to be like a half cadence. And I have, a, I have, I'm, we're going to work on that today. And then you have four more measures, and it's a perfect authentic cadence in your home key. Then the third phrase, you're going to have an authentic cadence, maybe a perfect authentic cadence, but I doubt it. Um, but it's you're going to pivot and modulate into the dominant key. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then your fourth phrase will be the same as your second phrase, okay? Um, and I'll show you how to make a modification um, at that point to pivot back to the home key. Um, 
So anyway, so stage one, stage two, stage three are only worth 10% of your grade. And stage four, so stage one is writing the first two phrases. Stage two is writing the second two phrases. Uh, and that would make your, your um, theme for your theme and variation. Stage three would be uh, adding a bunch of notes to it, a bunch of non-chord tones, something like that to, to make a variation of it. And then stage four would be going back to, to, to your theme and making what's called a character variation. Basically, we're going to change the time signature. Um, the, the right hand is the melody, but the left hand, you don't have to worry too much about at the moment. Um, I should have probably posted, but I will post something in, um, in the next part for the left hand. Because I didn't really want to confuse you about it. The left hand is just, we're just going to do canned uh, types of things. You know, there's jump bass. Uh, it's kind of hard. For me. Did you hear that piano, by the way? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, something like this. Uh, you could do something like this. Uh, uh, let me see what, what key am I in. Things like that, and I'll show you what they how how they work. Um, but uh, so the the intent of those chords, even though some of those chords were not in root position, is the intent is all root position. So that that's kind of what this overview and what I stated up here. But the the last stages were seventy percent, and it's the final stage totaling a hundred percent. All right, uh, stage one. Here's what you got to do. Okay, you got to develop a plan for modulating binary theme, which is pretty simple because I've already given you the plan. Uh, and you need to make a diagram. So if you don't know how to make a diagram, go back and kind of look at the diagram from last week's class. It is posted. Um, let me make sure. I know it is. Let me just show you where it's at. Uh, so it would be this week right here, uh, graph of Mozart, okay? And uh, now the graph is a little bit long. Uh, it's, it's certainly not what it is, but basically you're looking at something like this, making a graph that looks like this, and, and then you make a second graph that looks like this again. You don't have a three phrase one, okay? You only have two phrases because you have you have the first four measures, the second four measures. This, of course, it says five through 12. It doesn't have the same characteristics of it all. This is a half cadence in ours and a perfect authentic cadence. This is the modulating phrase. So, and then this would be the, 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 the final one is a PAC, which is gonna be the same as that one. So you've gotta make something like this, all right? So go back and look at it. If you're not completely sure, you know, the book, kind of does it too. Um, but let me just tell you, graphs are gonna be your best friend because once you've got a graph, you know what you're talking about, okay? Because you can always refer back to the graph because it gives you the phrase types, like this is A and this is A prime, so these are parallel phrases. It gives you the measure numbers, it gives you the cadence, it gives you the key. So these are really important. All right, going back to the modules, and we're going back to the assignment we were on. Let's see, composition project stage one. Boom. So here we go, it says develop the plan for modulating binary theme, which I've basically given you the plan. Make a diagram of the phrases, key signatures, cadences, cadences cadences and form. Basically, that's a two-part binary form. You got phrase one and phrase two, and with the repeat, that kind of constitutes the, uh, the, the part, and then phrase three and phrase four constitute the other part. So it's a two-part form, okay? Um, and of course, it says your third phrase should modulate, and the fourth phrase should go back to the home key. See the overview above, which I mentioned it in here also. Um, sorry, I'm 
Can you guys see this or should I make it a little bit bigger? We can see. Oh. All right, thank you. It, it could stay in the be full screen if you can. Um, there's full screen, which doesn't make much difference. So let's just do this. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, well, that creates other problems. Mm. What it doesn't do is, let's see if I can get the whole thing. Yes. All right. All right. So, uh, so, so your assignment this week is to compose two phrases. All right. And you're really going to compose one phrase, and then you're going to modify the second phrase because it's going to be like the first phrase if you're writing it in par and um, um, if writing in parallel construction which is the simplest thing to do and and it's the most common we, we see so you're going to do two phrases of your melody include roman numerals and root position bass notes there's no we're not we're not talking about inversions or anything like that there, there's really no inversions even though your left hand eventually we'll probably be playing some inversions. The, the intent of the left hand is to be heard as root position. Uh, so you, at the end, your first, your first phrase with a half cadence on scale degree two, I'm really telling you, and I'm, I'm just doing this because this is what we've been talking about. Uh, in the home key and your second phrase is a perfect authentic cadence scale degree one in the home key. I recommend that you use parallel construction of your phrases this will simplify your project. It won't degrade the project, but it will simplify a lot of things in the long run, okay? Uh, your phrases should be four measures in length in a simple quadruple, which is four, or um, um, I just noticed that I don't have my video on, sorry. Uh, which is four, simple quadruple, which is four, or uh, where was I reading? A uh, simple triple, which is three. But if you're going to use simple duple, you, your phrases should be eight measures. Okay? Um, so that's two, you know, cut time. Um, although cut time, you see, there's a misnomer. I would just avoid duple, okay? Uh, just, just do it in three or four. Okay? And just so you know, in your last variation, you're going to change the time signature. So if you were in four, you're just going to be in three, and if it's three, it's going to be in four. So, um, um, so if you're going to use compound time like yut dut uh, yut dut uh, like uh, nine eight or twelve eight, you could you could you could do that also. It's not a problem. Um, but the same requirements for compound duple, triple, and quadruple apply. You should use computer notation. All right, you don't have to use computer notation on this very first thing, but you really should. And, and this will give you, um, this is gonna really help you out in the long run, computer notation, because you can copy and paste, all right? Um, Finale is available in the computer lab. Somebody told me it's only on two. I'm sure it's on every Windows computer, but if not, we need to solve the problem, all right? But there's at least, uh, I know it's on two. You might have Finale. Uh, there, are other, there are other stuff. Uh, there are other programs. I mentioned one called Night, Night Flight here. Uh, there's, uh, I, I wouldn't go with the Finale notepad because it doesn't kind of allow you to do some of these things. And then you'll have to be printing it out, writing things in, taking a picture of it, and sending it. All right, so... It'd be simplest if you use Finale, but I understand that all of us don't have Finale, if, especially if you're not on campus. Um, so back to this. Uh, the end of your first phrase is, oh no, I'm down here. Use computer notations. Finale is available in the computer lab. Um, and, and this is, now this is even more important. Back up each time you do an assignment. Make frequent versions by renaming the file, i.e. I made, Schreiber composition 01. I put a zero in front of it because if you go beyond 10, then, then they won't be in order when you're looking at them and you know which one the last one is simply. And so sometimes you'll be opening the wrong file. Zero one, and then maybe in a half an hour I go zero, I go file save as a zero two, so on and so forth. Um, 
That's what that says. A simple way also to back up your project is to mail it to yourself, all right? Mailing it to yourself, and you might have a, a, a place like Dropbox or the box that you can put it in. That's also something you can do. But at least if you mail it to yourself, you know you have it. And if you can't get on the computer that it was on before, you, you can just download the, the file. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to make sure when you're backing things up, you're not backing up the backup file. It says something like BK something or other. So the first time you back something up, re-download it down and make sure it's the right type of file. Make sure you can open it back up because Finale won't open backup files. That's, uh, that, that's a whole different system. So just be careful with that. Um, you, if, you knew, if you use another, you can just send me Finale files. If you use another program, you're going to need to make a PDF and an audio file. And almost all of those programs will make audio files and PDFs. Um, in, 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 on, in Macintosh land, it's, uh, usually, uh, it's usually in both of them, in both of them nowadays, it's usually under print. You go to print and then you choose a driver that says PDF. Okay. So, um, but I don't need PDF files. Uh, if, if I start having problems reading the file, then we can make PDFs also. Um, so again, if you send me finale files, at least I can play the audio. Uh, if, you, if you send me something else, I probably can't. All right? It's important because, because then I'm going to come back and, and, and give you feedback on it. And I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start up a little Zoom thing and, and run through and give you some feedback and then send it to you, probably. Okay? I'm not completely sure. Uh, you should think about your rhythm and, and be consistent, and we'll talk about that. This will help you unify your phrases. Now, now granted, the, the cadences unify the phrases, phrases together, but the rhythm also is. Yeah, we could have all half notes or all quarter notes, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I would. I would look for some sort of rhythm. All right. Um, so there's also a link here that if you're if you're confused about non-chord tones, there's a lady that that talks about them. Uh, she's pretty good. I don't agree with everything she says, um, but basically, non-chord tones uh, are are your your best friends are neighbor tones and passing tones. And I, I gave you a thing about non-chord tones, but you might want the visual thing. Uh, non-chord tone name, passing tone, use a P, you can use an N, a positora, A, P, P, E for escape, S for suspension, R for retardation, A, N, T for an anticipation, D, N for double label, and pedal point, I wouldn't worry about it because you're not gonna be doing a pedal point. Uh, but a passing tone is approached by step and left by step in the same direction. See, approached by and left by. Neighbor tone is left by, approached by step and, and left by step in the opposite direction. So that's that. All right. And then, then I've got some examples here. Uh, I just kind of made them up. This is kind of in the middle of the phrase. I didn't put measure one in here, but this is four, one. And this is a this is all half notes. Don't get me wrong. All right. Um, and if you did that, that would be fine as long as you had a um, some sort of um, high point that you didn't repeat and so on and so forth, which we'll go over in a little bit here. But here's what you need to do. You need to put base notes only. So this was four, five, one in the key of A, and Roman numerals. All right. And this is, um, then this, these numbers right here are the intervals between the base. So if you don't have a 10, an 8, a 5, or a 3, I don't have a 3 in here, it's a non-chord tone. Like, see this 6 right here? It's a non-chord tone. So then mark it. Just mark it above it. And it's approached by step and left by step in the same direction. So that's the definition of a passing tone. Approach by step and left by step in the same direction. All right. 
So this is kind of what you're going to be turning in, uh, something that looks like this for stage one. Here, here's another version right here. Uh, and I, I'm looking at, and I'm actually doing kind of rhythms here, and we'll talk about rhythms here, but da, 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 it's da, da, sorry, it's da, 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 it's da, di, da, di, da, 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 all right? So I'm, I'm being consistent on the rhythm, and um, but you kind of get an idea here. Here's a nine, eight. So 10, 9, 8, that's approached by step and left by step in the same direction as passing. Okay, so this one is a little bit more complicated, but I was trying to keep the rhythm going here. All right, so what this is really is this is 6 going to 5. It's a passing tone, and then it's just decorated by this incomplete neighbor. All right. Um, and you see, you know, I didn't put down incomplete neighbors in here. Um, Partly, if you watch that video, she's gonna she's gonna change the difference. But an incomplete neighbor is either an escape tone or an appoggiatura. That video boils it down into something exact. All right. Um, so, but anyways, if 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 you look at this, this note right here is approached by skip, so leap or skip, and left by step in the opposite direction. All right. A positive is approached by leap, a, a skip is a leap also, and left by step often in the opposite direction of the leap. All right, so you can kind of figure these out here. But I was just putting it in for the rhythm, all right? So these are, these are like the perfect authentic cadences. This is a suspension right here, nine, eight, and it's a suspension because it's prepared by same tone. It would be a passing tone like like here, if it just went to, to there, it's a passing tone, really. But this one's a suspension. Down here, suspensions. Approached by the same tone and left by step down, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so that's there. And then here I give some examples of rhythm, because rhythm is really important. So you can go da, 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 da. All right. Uh, at least at your cadence, you change the rhythm. Okay. Or the next one. Well, then, then this is a, this is a variation of this because this is the first phrase. This is the second phrase right here. All right. So you're really starting at the same, the same rhythm, and you're giving the idea of the same rhythm. And so this one, the second phrase goes da 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 da. All right, or you could have been in the last measure where the PAC it could have just been a whole note, okay, instead of two half notes. But the idea here is is giving your your phrases some sort of uh, some sort of rhythm that identifies them. Here's another one. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, yeah, maybe. da 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 da. Da, da, da. That's the half cadence then. Da, 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 da. They're actually the exact same rhythm. Okay. It wasn't modified. Excuse me. They're the exact same rhythm. It wasn't modified. But you know, you need to come up with some sort of rhythm. All right. But I wouldn't make anything too difficult. And the reason is, is because you need to leave yourself some room to add a bunch of non-chord tones in the second the second one. And there you could also change your rhythm if you wanted to, all right? So, so that's kind of it uh, in a nutshell of what we're doing. And so now let's just talk about the, the things that you can do. So I'm going to make sure this is up. I'm going to share a new screen, new share. Hmm. Share, all right. So is anyone here? I got seven people here. Man, that's so super. I don't know what to say. Uh, I can pin the video now. All right. Uh, I didn't want to pin Carl's video. Hang on a second. I'm screwing things up here. All right. 
Okay, so is anyone here familiar with Finale? Yes. All right. So basically I brought up, I, I, I went through and uh, can you see this screen right here? Yeah. New, new screen. I, I just, I need to move it. I need to move something out because something's in the way. Let's see. So I just went uh, next. Uh, I said grand staff. I added it. I said next. I gave it a title. He said next. I gave it a key. I actually changed this from 120 to 100. Um, but you don't have to do that here. You can do it later. Then I hit finish. And that's what I ended up with. All right. Uh, except it, I put a title in and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just close this. Don't save. Now, can you see the one that says composition project class? Mm hmm. All right, so I, that was the title I put in there. And then it was really big type, and I just changed the type down. Over here is this text tool, all right? And you can click in there, and you can go highlight it, and you can change the text size, okay? Uh, then there were two things down here, composer and arranger. I deleted the arranger, and I put my name in as, as, as the composer, and it automatically gave me quarter note equals 100, all right? So... Now I want to talk about various ways to um, do it. There are three ways that phrases work. It's a single chord followed by a cadence, an elaboration of a single chord followed by a cadence, and uh, 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 I forgot the exact words, but it's often the cadence formula, a, a, a series of chords often the cadence formula, all right? So here's the problem. I get all these up here, and I got four measure phrases, all right? I only want four systems with four measures on each system. So if you click on this little thing here, and you count one, two, three, four, and you go to the fifth one, and you click on it, you can double click or just click and hit the down arrow. I got four on that one. So then I go one, two, three, four, go to the fifth one, click the down arrow. I got four there. All right, one, two, three, four. Click this one. I got four. One, two, three, four. Go to the fifth one. Click that one. And I sent everything over to the next page. And the thing is, is you'll be using the next page for your first variation. So you should strive with whatever program you're using is to continue. Page two is the second one. And it, it's pretty easy to set up. So I'm actually going to uh, change the page size of this. Uh, for a second here, so we can uh, so we can we can see it better. So I'm fitting it into the window. So this is kind of like uh, not quite all in the right places. Um, hang on, there was this other thing I did, and I didn't show it to you. That first system was over like this, and you should just move it back over. You do that down here. This is called the page layout tool, and you move it over. All right, so anyways, within this page layout tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grab this one. You can just click it and grab it and move it. I'm gonna move it down a little bit, and I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Notice I still got some space down here, so I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Uh, and they're not completely perfect, but the great thing about once you get this down, you can just match them up as you go if, if you want to. But you're giving yourself space here below this so you can put Roman numerals, and above it that you can put passing tones, and in the middle you can put something here. So this brings up, how do I write these certain things? Well, you should use text boxes, and you should use only one text box in each line. So down here, uh, this is the text box, and I'm gonna double click on it, all right? And I'm gonna say, we're in the key of uh, G. And then I'm going to put, uh, and I know that's small. I'm going to enlarge it now. I'm sorry. Uh, command one, uh, command two. All right. You can see it? Yes, sir. All right. Let's see if I can get all four measures. I can get all four measures. I can get this out of the way now. All right. So back. So there's my text box right there. I'm going to move this out of the way. So I get G, and then I just hit the space bar, and I move it over. And uh, wherever my bass note's going to appear, I'm just going to go one. This is a single chord followed by a cadence. 
Um, I hit the space bar um, by accident. I'm sorry about that. So here you can see it's, it's blink. Can you see that this is blinking right here? Yes, sir. Okay. So then I'm just going to do one. And I'm just going to do one. And then I'm just going to do five. All right. Single chord followed by cadence. All right. So the great thing about this is, is once you get this, you can just copy and paste it into your next one instead of having to do all this again. All right. So I'm in the key of G, so I'm going to put some notes in. I use speedy note entry. You can use what you can use this. I'm just not good at this, partly because it wasn't around when I first did it. And I actually learned how to enter notes on the keyboard. Um, because, because in the early days, things didn't work like they worked. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to go seven, seven. Uh, these are the numbers I'm typing. I'm talking to myself. And then I'm going to just move it down, and in G is five. Okay, so seven. So there, I got the bass notes. Okay, single chord followed by cadence. And then I'm going to make up some sort of melody. Okay, so... Right here, and, and uh, I'm just going to move this thing up and down. Here are my note choices. I can only really start with a G, a B, or a D. So I can start with this D down here. Oh, I, my thumb stepped on it. Or this G right here, which is the next note. This B right here, this D, or this G. But you don't want to start up there because you want your, your you want to do some sort of curve in it where you have a high point that you don't really repeat. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I use most often three, and, and the reason is, is because if I was using uh, one, it's perfect interval. If I was using five, it's a perfect interval. But if I'm using three, I got something that sounds nice. What I generally do is I make some sort of framework for what I'm going to do, all right? So let's just say I do, I start with a G. And this is only my framework. And I'm going to go down here to this G right here. Uh, and I'm just guessing my way here. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. These are all chord tones, by the way. All right. I haven't actually come up with my rhythm. But I know that I'm going to, in this measure, land on scale degree two. Because it's my half cadence. So I'm going to put this note right here where I want to go. All right. So I'm thinking that, although this isn't great, this is my high point. Okay, that D. So at some point I want to... Um, uh, get down to there. So I got D, I got C, I can go down to a B, six. Yeah, no, I, that's the wrong note. I want to just go here, and this is, you know, not very good, but I, it's a start. It's really the point. Six. And this is, a, I'm sorry. All right, so so then I got I got something that goes, skips down, skips back up, skips up to here, and then does stepwise motion into the cadence here. All right, uh, and this is a ten. G up to up to B is a third, but we often call it a tenth if it's if it's a, if it's further than a third. All right, this is an eight for an octave. Again, this is G. This is a tenth. And this is a fifth. You never go beyond. 10. We don't go 11, 12. We get confused. So G to D is a fifth. So if I was writing these, I would take this text box and I would just click here and I would move it out to underneath between two notes. And I would go 10. Like this. Am I boring somebody? Somebody's yawning away. 10. And then that's uh, five. And then, so G up to C is a four. That's a non-chord tone. All right, three. 
And then right here um, is a uh, D to A is a uh, five. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Hey, one of the things I don't want to see here is like 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way through. Um, but I got it the first two measures. It's probably not great, but it's, it's okay. But I, if I see five and five right next to each other, that's like parallel motion. So you want to avoid things like that. This tells you a lot of things. It tells you about your, your melody here. So then I want to mark this as a non-chord tone. And normally what I would do is I would start it right here and send it over because I might have more. But I'm just going to start it right here and probably have to erase it in a minute. But this non-chord tone is approached by what and left by what? Is approached by step and left by step. Yeah. So what kind of non-chord tone is it? Passing tone. Passing. So I'm just going to put a passing tone there. And that's a little bit close, so I'm going to move it up. All right? So now I really want to come up with some sort of rhythm. You know, um, and I often fiddle around with, with what I'm doing. Here, here's what I got. Here, let me let, let me play. Let Finale play it. Uh, see if you can hear it. Let me see. Got to move this out of the way. No. Um. Can you? Could you hear? Did you hear this? Yeah, I hit stop, and it didn't stop. All right. Uh, was it loud enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure because that's finale playing. Right. So I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. All right. So this is this is my basic idea, and I could just use this if I wanted. Look, it's got a focal point. It's got a beginning, a focal point, and an end. So. So I would probably change the rhythm and add some more non-chord tones. So I could just do this. I could go quarter note, quarter note, half note. Quarter note, quarter note, half note. Quarter note. I could just repeat the note right here and then go quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, half note, and then whole note as an example. So I'm just gonna kind of do this down here for a second, okay? Um, to show you what I'm, yes. In our so in our assignment for this week, do you want us to do you want us to like make those adjustments to the melody? Like, do um, you want? I, I'm just I'm just rhythm? I'm just really trying to point out. Well, were you here at the beginning when I talked about all this? Yes, sir. I was just saying, like, right. so I'm only trying to point. Out, I'm only trying to point out ways of writing something. Mm -hmm. This is my fundamental framework right now for what yeah. I'm working on, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so so here it is right here. Now, now, I, now I decided to put a little bit better rhythm in it. I'm not, I'm not gonna complain if you turn this in like this, okay? I'm just trying to show you various ways of doing things. So I'm gonna go like this. Uh, and then I'm going to go up here. Then I'm going to repeat this note, uh, which isn't very good. Uh, and we'll we'll see. And then I'm going to go here. Seven. All right. So the great thing about all this is um, we can. Um, uh, copy and paste this stuff here. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to select that measure. I'm going to hold the shift key down, select this measure, and you can drag it or copy it. I'm just going to drag it. But if you're like this, it's going to end up weird. I'm going to let go and then everything's going to end up weird. Okay. Uh, so you got to make sure you line it up in the right place. All right. There it is right there. And then with the text tool, Uh, 
copy this uh, and then I can paste it right here. All right. And of course, it's not in perfect positioning. It's pretty close. Uh, anyways, and uh, I'm going to go through the intervals in a minute. Um, probably not going to type them because I want to go over a couple other things. But what I am going to do is I'm going to play the first one and I'm going to play the second one. Here's the first one, the top. And I could make this a little bit better. Um, by doing this right here. Instead of this whole note here, I'm gonna stick this as a half note. Oh, that's six, and then six again. So, and this is kind of a suspension rolling over it. So let's see, let me go uh, back a little bit. Doing it time, here we go. Here, this should start right here and then go to here. There it is. And then here's the second phrase. All right. Basically, what I've done here is I've created, uh, this isn't a suspension, actually. Um, but it's a repeat of a note, but nothing moves, so it's not parallel motion. But this is a suspension because it goes down. Um, and because this is a six moving to a five. So here, here, here I got, I got 10, nine, eight. So the nine is a passing tone. So I'd put that up as a passing tone and I would type 10, nine, eight. I'm gonna just type it as text. Uh, sorry. 10, nine, eight, and then I'm gonna go 10, uh, and this is a, a, an 11, we call that a four, and a five, and then this is a five again, and this is what I was saying, that that's probably parallel motion, but it's not because nothing moved, okay? Um, five, and then this is four, that's another passing tone. Both, all the, both these fours were passing tones. And then this is uh, three. And then this is six, five. And if I really wanted to spruce it up, I would do this. I would put in ties. And one of the things that I find that people do when they put in ties is they don't use the tie tool, they use the slur tool, okay? So, and then you just get a repeat of the note. So this is an actual suspension. This is just the character of the rhythm, all right? So it's not a big deal, but, I, but what I do want to cover at this moment is the next phrase. And I'm just gonna go back here and I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and copy this. Uh, and, and on my computer, it's Command C on a Windows, it would be Control C. And then I'm gonna just double click on that and press Command V, it would be Control V as in villain. That's my first phrase. Uh, th this was my first phrase up here. And this one, is my parallel phrase to it, but this has to change, all right? So, um, text, 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 there we go. Uh, sorry. So really, just so you know, this this one is getting these ones are out of place. This one belongs right underneath here. All right. Does everybody understand that? 
right at the downbeat, you should put the one, don't put it in the middle of the measure. So I'm gonna fix this one on the bottom here. Um, the great thing about fixing things, see that when you put notes in it, it starts shifting around and you have to end up fixing it at the end. This is actually gonna be a five. Because this is my final phrase, followed by a one. All right, they should be lining up right underneath where they're at, all right? So I gotta modify this. So I'm gonna take the bass note and I'm gonna move it down. Uh, and I just did it like that. Uh, I could have just deleted it and typed it. So here's my delete, I hit delete, and I'm gonna go like this and type. Um, seven. All right, uh, so now I gotta modify this line, all right, to land on one, all right? So, um, <coughs> so here I'm gonna, uh, I just, I actually, uh, excuse me, uh, I did the wrong one, all right. Okay, uh, I, I, I was supposed to be fixing this line. All right, so I'm gonna do this, hit delete, move it over to there, there, there's five. We, are we completely bored now? No. Um, I'm going. <laughs> All right, so there's my five one. So I got to modify this in some way. Um, so instead of landing on on two, I want to land on scale degree one. So let's just start out by doing that. And uh, I think the simplest way to do this is to go back to the B right here and then go down here. And that gives me the, the general framework of it. So I'm just comparing it to this phrase right here, all right? And that's the simplest way to do it. So uh, instead of it being a four, it would be a three, and this would be a two. So you have a three, two right here. Uh, it's actually be a 10, nine or something like that, because this is the eight, all right? So I, I, I don't really have enough time to put them in, but you kind of get the idea of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to this one and I'm going to copy and paste this one into um, what I wanna do. Now, if, if, if I was working on a smaller scale, I wouldn't be copying and pasting, I'd just be dragging. Um, but it's hard to drag when it's not on the screen, all right? So I'm gonna modify this one right here. Uh, again, uh, move this out of the way. Wait again. All right, so here's my like five one. All right, and uh, so really what I wouldn't do, the, the only thing I really need to do is to modify this. There's a couple different things I can do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first take this tie out of this note right here. Um, and um, then I'm going to uh, move this note down here. Move this note down here. Move this note down here and take the tie out of that. Well, no, I'm gonna leave that there because I'm gonna put this here. And I'm gonna move this down. So basically I've just modified that phrase because I'm writing in parallel to work here. Now I don't necessarily like this, all right? I like, this this move right here at the half cadence, but on a perfect authentic cadence, 
particularly at the end of a section, I like it on the downbeat. That's a personal thing for me, all right? But it's rhythmically strong. Those are the terms we talked about. So I'm just gonna now go back and I'm gonna take this out of there. And I'm gonna go to this right here. I'm gonna hit delete, move it down, delete again, and hit seven. I personally like it better like that. All right, does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I need to go command one. All right. There's a couple other ways we can do this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's try this again. One, two, three, four. Here's five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, somehow I sent that back up. Four, five, and uh, add measure, please. Where the hell I get it? Add measure one measure. All right. So now I, in theory, have this right here, and this they put it in the wrong place, so I'm going to put it there. Um. I'm just gonna do a quick little thing and I'm lining things up to the to, to this side right here, just getting them close. It kind of just gives me an idea. That's not quite right, but that's okay. Because uh, I spent all my time lining that one up right, which I really didn't, but I'm saying, you know, that's what you should be doing. Um, and so then I can just kind of eyeball it to get these in the right place. Having trouble with this one, There's, there it is right there. So then we have something called, um, well, these were all a single chord followed by a cadence. Then we have elaboration of a single chord followed by a cadence. Um, so we're in the key of A, you know, we're in the key of G. Um, boom, 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 boom. So I get one. Okay, this is just a great big tonic. So in, in um, chord progressions, one can go to four. And four can go to one. All right. Normally we would do this, it would be something like just say there'd be one, four, one, six, but we're not using inversion. That's really not. But this is an elaboration of one. This is a simple elaboration of one. I could have done something like one, two, four, two, which would have had a pedal point of the same bass note back to one, which is what the book shows actually. Okay, all right. So then I'm then moving forward here to the cadence. All right. So this is that uh, that that situation right there. Um, that is an elaboration. All right, and I know it's not much of an elaboration. Um, and so here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go one four. We have to break it because we're gonna have to go five here. But you see, if you use parallel construction, everybody will get the idea that that's what that is, supposedly. No, but realize this is a real short version of, of doing this. It's not, it's, it's not meant for me to, for you to spend a whole semester trying to figure this out, all right? So that's, that's that, that's what I would do here, all right? So the last thing is a structural progression, often the cadence formula, all right? So, so the way to do that one right there is, uh, let's try moving over. I'm in the key of G. Uh, we start with the one chord, that's what we always start with. And then this would be a four. Normally four goes to five, but we're working on going to a half cadence. So four goes to two pretty good. And and, and four and two, six are kind of the same thing because they have that scale degree four. But of course, we're not using that. But, but this still works as a cadential progression. All right. And then it's five. All right. Now I could just copy all this and I'm going to because it's easier right now to do that. I usually just type them in so I can get them in the right places. Uh, so they were one, four, and now I have to change it to five one all right 
So these are the two types. So this is a this is a this is a, a structural harmonic progression. Reason I'm typing this in is because I will post this, unless you don't want me to. Um, but I also, but all, you can also look at the video. I mean, I post these things up, and uh, and I know you don't like looking at my ugly mug, and I understand that. But here is uh, an elaboration. Uh, e L O. Yeah, it's not an E. Uh, this could be spelled wrong. E lab for. Ration, I spelled I O N. I'll have to look that up. Does anyone know how to spell it? I think that's right. I can't really see it. Okay. Well, you said elaboration. Yeah. Correct. It's it's not the E L L O R B A T I L N elaboration. E L L O R. No E L L. A B O R A T I O N. Well, that's what I have. Elaboration. Yeah, that's that's what I have here. All right, I thought you spelled it differently. Oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, let's not worry about if it's wrong. I'll I'll go look the spelling up when I'm done because because we're gonna run out of time here. All right. Of a S I N G L E single chord followed by a cadence. All right, and this one was, um, this whole page was a single chord. Followed by a cadence. Okay. So the most important thing you can do is to put these in. Mark your non chord tones and make sure you just do this, and I'm doing one chord per measure, and I might not have said that in the directions. Do yourself a favor, do one chord per measure. Otherwise, it's gonna, it's gonna cause a, a, a lot of things later on, um, especially when you get into the, uh, uh, the uh, variations. All right, yes, so, pardon, question, go ahead. Someone said something. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, um, so this first, this first segment on the turn in our first eight measures, right? Yeah, we're only doing eight measures. We are only doing eight measures. Next week, I will talk about modulating and pivoting back. I'll actually, in actuality, just listen. Mm -hmm. If you do this in parallel construction, you got this phrase right here followed by this phrase right here, uh, excuse me, this phrase right here followed by Let's do this down here. This phrase right here followed by this phrase right here, let's just say. All right. These aren't the right things. So then in your, your next one, you're going to dump this phrase in there, and you're going to pivot and then modify these notes. Okay? Then you're going to take your second phrase and put it in as your fourth phrase. So you got about three measures to write for your second one. The key to it is getting the first one down. Okay? This is where we're going to stall out. You and I, you and everybody else. I'm not saying everybody else, but yeah, I've had enough experience on getting things, and they don't even resemble what I'm talking about here. All right? Now, I am spending a lot of time on this, which I don't always spend this much time on it. And normally what I would do is I would be face-to-face -face with you, giving you comments, and us agreeing on something, but we're not in that mode anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so it would it would be much better if you didn't if you didn't blow this off until turning it on in on Tuesday because next week I'm going to be talking about the next part. But you can't do the next part unless you get this part right. I really need to stress this. If you don't get this part right, there's no reason to do the next part because you'll just have to be fixing stuff. Yes, sir. Once you get these two parts right, then it goes slowly. But here's what happens. 
people don't do it at all, at all, at all, and then they turn in three parts, and the first part's wrong, so that means all of the parts are wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it would be much better if you turn this in on Thursday so I can get a look at it, send a video back to you, or do something like that, and, you know, just to say, just, just a short five-minute thing, this is what I see, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you, if you don't have access to something, you could write this by hand this, this time only, okay? Um, but you really don't want to write this whole thing by hand because you're going to send something in and then you're going to have to erase things and, and it's just a big mess. And if you're, if, you're, if you're writing it by hand, I'd want you to be able to play it on the piano. As for non-chord tones, if you don't know what they are, you can't write them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So non-chord tones, no matter what you're playing, we are always talking about root position. No matter what's in the left hand, you're still going to be in root position. So you're basing it off the root of the chord, all right? Um, because in the first variation, you're going to have to write a lot of non-chord tones. Once we figure them out and they're all good, we can just erase them, all right? Because I'm not that concerned about it after that, all right? So I, I want you to notice also that I copied and pasted something here, and I got this back in here. You don't want to do that. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, it is. Um, God, I like the old way this was. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, for this composition project, we're just. Um, are we going in and like fixing stuff on a composition that's already there? Or are we making. You, no, this one, is our uh, composition. You are making this up. Okay, so we're making this up and we have to follow a certain set of rules. A certain set of rules, which are, which are the things that we're talking about in class. I, this composition project is meant to, to help you solidify and understand parallel construction, scale degree two, how things work together a little bit. And then to understand variations, how they can be different, but they can be the same thing. And we will, by the time we get to the variations, because next week we'll be doing the Rondo chapter, and then I think a little bit that we got like a midterm and then we're gonna be on variations and that's when stage three would start, okay? But yeah, this is a composition. You're not fixing something, all right? Mm -hmm. This is a composition you're writing, all right? So, so, so do we have- I'm gonna do some real simple things. Yes, go ahead. So do we have a certain criteria or a certain set of guidelines? Were you here at the beginning of class? Is? Were you here at the beginning of class? I was, but I don't think I, uh, I think I missed that part. Then you weren't here at the beginning of class. Let's see. I'm um, sharing a new screen. At least I think I am. Do you guys see uh, Canvas? Mm -mm. All right, let's start all over again. Uh, I'm looking for it on my desktop. Uh, there it is right there. Do you see Canvas now? Yes, sir. Here, 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 here it is. It's in modules. It's module five, composition project stage one. Here's the PDF. You can download it or you can just view it. And we're just going to view it. Um, Here's kind of a, basically what you're doing, an overview of it, and here is stage one, all right? But if you, if you missed this, read this carefully, okay? All right, then here is, were you here for this part of it? Who am I talking to? You're talking to me, no, I don't. You, were you here no. for this part of it? No, I oh, must have been doing something. something. You must, yeah, doing something. Uh, if you weren't here, uh, yeah, doing something else is not good because you're missing things, all right? And this, and I discussed all of this in depth. It was, it, it was 20 plus minutes I discussed this stuff right here before I even went to the finale file to start off, all right? So go back and look at the video, okay? All right. Clear? All right, so I'm encouraging you to do something and turn it in on Thursday. So I can do something with it 
and, and give you feedback because most likely you're going to have to make some adjustments. All right? So this part is only worth 10 points. There's a total of 100 points. The next part's worth 10 points. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Does, right. the, does the sound have to be piano? Or is, when we get to the finale file, um, the document we're using is um, SATB, SATB style piano? Uh, we're not doing SATB. Okay, so we'll just have to set it up where the style is piano. Yeah, uh, if you choose that, it's probably going to be piano. Okay. See how I set it up and I, I chose the uh, grand staff? Okay, okay. It'll probably be piano. I, uh, okay. We're not really doing SATB because our left hand is going to contain all the chords in some sort of rhythmic pattern, which I will make a discussion on next week because that's when you're going to go back and add it to the top. Okay. All right. Is that clear? Yes, uh -huh. All right. Everybody have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Oh, wait a minute. I got a bunch of people that showed up uh, since then since I took attendance. So don't leave unless you were here at the very beginning. That was only three people. So Carl, I got you for attendance. You can leave. Um, Samuel Neal, I already had you for attendance. Jacoby Fleming, I already had you for attendance. Remy? Yes. Got you now. Thank you very much. Who else okay. have we got? Um, Hubbard, Hubbard. I already had Hubbard uh, Greer. Good to see you, Mr. Greer. I got you for attendance. Are you there? Yes, sir. All right. All right, we're 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 done unless you got a question. I got a question. Okay, I'm pausing the video. Hang on a second. Go ahead. Okay, so for I, this is a different class I'm asking about, but oh, for the next class. Okay, you're